Hello there invaders, welcome to my what if the Sith Empire from the Old Republic attacked during the Clone Wars. This video was created as a request, so let's get started. The real beginnings of the Sith continued to be an enigma. The Sith line was in truth essentially irrelevant until 3000 years ago when banished Dark Jedi reached Korriban and conquered the Sith under their control and their beliefs. As the years went, the Dark Jedi interwoven with individuals they governed, and in time the name Sith grew a different significance. This mighty society arose increasing quickly, guided by a rising populace of aspiring Dark Force operators. 1,500 years ago, the Sith Society's borders reached the Republic, and the Great Hyperspace War commenced. Although the Sith were winning initially, the Jedi recovered to triumph over the Dark Side equivalents, thoroughly crushing the Sith Society on Korriban. Unbeknown to the Jedi though, a Sith identified as Lord Vitiate survived to flee the massacre and escaped into deep space with his highly dependable Dark Lords. Lord Vitiate would proclaim himself to be the Emperor, and him and his army established itself on Droman Cass. These remaining Sith set up restoring their civilization, eager to at some point come back for vengeance. Across the path of the following 1000 years, the Sith Empire regained its power. The Emperor created a vast Imperial army, an armada of sophisticated combat ships, and carried out dark side rituals which extended his existence and his unchallenged reign. When the moment of revenge came, the Sith started subverting star systems in the Outer Rim, planting seeds of conflict against the Republic and creating mysterious agreements with regional lawbreakers and military leaders. With all the parts seamlessly in order, the Sith began an immense attack which knocked the Jedi totally by surprise. In the open wave, the Sith achieved taking command of numerous star systems in the Outer Rim, demolishing some of the major Republic hangars and suffocating common trade lanes. Meanwhile, the secret Dark Lord Sidious was not too pleased with the ongoing events as it was a challenge to his own plans to rule the galaxy. He decided to stay hidden for the time being and let his apprentice, Darth Tyrannus and General Grievous deal with both opposition until the ideal moment arises. The Jedi Council had convened to discuss the matters of urgency. Not only did they have to to deal with the Separatists, now they had the almighty Sith Empire too. The Council decided to ask for more clones to be produced on Kamino, and ask the Senate for aid to create a Republic army of civilians to fight alongside the clones. Both requests were permitted. This was sure to be an all-out war. The Sith Empire attacked both Separatist and Republic worlds, taking control of some of them in the process. The galaxy was an all-out war, with three sides against each other. The Republic and Separatists had temporary ceasefire to defend the aligned planets and wage their attacks upon the new settlements and capital ships of the Sith Empire. After years of fighting and devastating loss of life and destruction, news trickled through, finally, of the location of the Sith Empire homeworld, Droman Cass. The news has reached the Republic and Separatist factions, and they decided to both send out the majority of their forces for an all-out attack of the home world of the Sith Empire. Darth Sidious decided that this is the right time to enter the war, as he thought he could end both the Republic and Sith Empire in one final sweep. Both factions, Republic and Separatist, advanced on towards Droman Cass. The Sith Empire positioned their forces in defence of their homeworld, with many capital ships and squadron ships surrounding the planet. On the ground was many forts and ready prepared troops and Sith, protecting important settlements and cities. 
After continuous days of battle above the atmosphere of the planet, the Republic and Separatists finally managed to make a gap through to reach the planet's surface. The Sith Empire's space forces were weakened but stubborn, so it did not make it easy for them, which resulted in only a small number of ships breaking through from both factions every few hours. The Separatist and Republic forces no longer abided by the seas fire once on the ground. It was every faction for itself. It was a massacre, with bodies lying on the ground everywhere you looked. It made the already grim, dark planet seem even grimmer. The Republic slowly captured cities on the south side of the planet, while the Separatists conquered the north cities one by one, until they both, after years of fighting, reached the capital. By this time, the atmosphere above the planet was virtually defenceless, which made a few remaining troops from the Republican Separatists enter the planet with near ease. The final assault is upon us. With all factions' forces very low in number, there seemed more space about the planet than before. That is, if you don't include the rotting corpses and droids nearly covering all areas of the surface of the planet. Though, the captor looked a lot different than the rest of the planet, though as until now, the Sith Empire's competition had never entered the capital city. Don't get me wrong, it was still dark and grim, but it had a bit of beauty to it, structure-wise, like the impressive Sith Temple. The only people left on all sides were the most gifted fighters, the greatest of Force users, and the most skilled fighters, or in case of the Separatist, they preferred quantity over quality so they possessed the most fighters at their disposal with the droids' forces but were not as efficient as the other factions. A week went by and after losing a damaging number of warriors from all sides, they were all down to the last few before the Separatists and Republic managed to finally enter the Sith Sanctum where the most important figures of the Sith Empire were holding. On the Republic side were Yoda, Mace Windu, Obi-Wan Kenobi Anakin Skywalker, Captain Rex, and Commander Cordy. With the Separatists were Sidious, Dooku, General Grievous, Asajj Ventress, a Droidica, a Bait 2 Battle Droid, and IG 100 Magnagad. The last of the Sith Empire were Vitiate, Malgus, Barus, Zash, Scourge, and Jacer Wilson. Fight interrupts in a Sith Sanctum. Grandmaster Yoda battles Darth Sidious and Darth Vitiate. Count Dooku fights Mace Windu and Darth Malgus. Darth Baras is dueling with Obi-Wan Kenobi and General Grievous. Anakin Skywalker is battling Asajj Ventress and Darth Zash. The Droidica is combating Captain Rex and Lord Scourge. Jason Williamson is Brawling with Commander Cody and a B2 battle droid and IG-100 Magnagad. The battle is very intense and none of the combatants are easily defeated. Jaser Wilson defeats Commander Cody after Cody had just destroyed the B2 battle droid and IG-100 Magnagad. Lord Scourge is victorious in his battle, but not before Rex efficiently blows up the droidica. Anakin Skywalker triumphs over Asajj Ventress and Zash. Obi-Wan Kenobi overcomes Barras and Grievous. Mace Windu wins his battle with Dooku and Malgus. In the ultimate showdown between the strongest forced users, Yoda, Sidious and Vitiate, it was very close with the narrowest of margins. Either one could have triumphed at different points in the battle, but for an inch of a swing of a lightsaber, after the hard-fought contest of the ultimate Shia power, Darth Sidious dispatches Yoda and Vitiate. So the remaining competitors were Darth Sidious, Master Mace Windu, Master Obi-Wan Kenobi, Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker, Lord Scourge and Jacer Wilson. Which means Darth Sidious was sole survivor of the Separatist. The Republic with Master Mace Windu Master Obi-Wan Kenobi and Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker. The two Sith Empire remain were Lord Scourge and Jaser Wilson, respectively. They have an all-out brawl, with Team Republic initially overwhelming the other parties. 
The first to fall is Jesa Wilson. Anakin Skywalker first pushes her to the floor, then leaps up in the air and puts his lightsaber through her stomach. In an act of pure rage, Lord Scourge ferociously batters his lightsaber against Anakin's until Anakin loses his grip and the lightsaber gets hit out of his hand. Scourge is in playing around and slices both of Anakin's arms off, then chops off his head. Obi-Wan, clearly distraught due to the death of his Padawan, pauses for a second. But he is used to people close to him dying in battle. Now is not the time to grieve and lose control, thought Obi-Wan. The light side will guide me. Obi-Wan advances to Scourge, but once he gets close, he uses a defensive stance. He waits for him to attack, and he does, still full of rage. Obi-Wan blocks all of Scourge's vicious strikes with ease. He dodges and evades, until eventually he sees an opening to strike. In a calm manner, cuts off two of Scourge's arms, then stabs him. Then says, How do you like it? So uncivilized. Ha 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 ha! The only joke that is here is you. You are not even worth my time. Pathetic. State Star Sidious. Palpatine uses Force Lightning on Kenobi, and this knocks Kenobi to the floor. Mace Windu jumps in to protect Kenobi from the Force Lightning with his lightsaber. I knew it was you, Chancellor Palpatine. You were the Sith Lord we were looking for, says Windu. You won't defeat me. I defeated your Grand Master and the so-called Emperor Vitiate. I am the Grand Master. I am the only Emperor of the Galaxy, says Sidious. Not on my watch, replies Miss. Obi-Wan is now up on his feet and charges at the Dark Lord. The usually calm Kenobi seems to be going to fight offensive. This is a mistake as he, Sidious, ignites his lightsaber and with cat-like speed pokes his lightsaber through his chest and laughs maniacally. <laughs> you should not have done that, says an angry window. Mace channels the dark side to use against Palpatine with his ability for pad. He swings his lightsaber like a bat, knocking Sidious' force lightning back at him. Sidious is dazed and weak, but uses his lightsaber to fight off Windu's strikes for a while, till he can't no more. Mace's ability is too much, possibly due to the immense power of the dark side he himself possesses. As Mace's ability absorbs the dark side attacks and pushes it right back against him. Mace spins around and catches Sidious off guard and places his lightsaber right through his chest. Looks like an early retirement, Emperor Palpatine. The defeated Darth Lord looks at Windu with disgust and bewilderment. Windu says, It's over. In truth, is it really over though? Darth Sidious and Darth Vitiate are known for their extreme power and immortality. Who knows if they are really, truly gone? This was my What If the Sith Empire Attack During the Clone Wars video. Hope you enjoyed. As an Amazon affiliate, I earn commission from purchases. If you like this, I recommend the book The Old Republic Deceived. It is currently going for £6.54 on mass market paperback, £3.99 on Kindle, or you can get it with a one month subscription with Audible. Audible currently do a one month free trial. All links are down below in the description. Like and subscribe. Until the next time, on Star Wars Invader.